under the tree of the great long leaves, the new tree flowering in our hearts, there is but one leader, but one chief, Wakan Tonka, the Creator, the, the Eternal One, who shines in the light of every star and burns in the fire of the sun. No, my people, that one lives in you. Do not diminish the sunlight by giving your power away to another. From this day forward, let all Iroquois-speaking people recognize the her that hierarchy makes sterile soil in which the tree of peace withers and soon dies. Whenever you have the entrenched leadership of one man or a small ruling elite, you have a society structured according to the ways of violence. Such a society is camped under the very branches of the tree of war. Violence is the root of hierarchical, her, hierarchical society. Such societies will never know peace. Their people will always be restless at war, if not with others, then within themselves. There is no hierarchy in God's sight. Such foolishness is unknown among the healthy tribes. Let no man be a leader for a lifetime, for I say to you, if any man has been a leader too long, he has clearly failed. The leader that wields the power and the magic of the Great One is leader only for a particular purpose, a particular moment, leader only for a season or a project or a journey. Not one of these geese I hear passing above is so foolish as to try to fly forever before the flock. His wings would quickly tire and he would surely fall. A spirit of such disorder would have nowhere to look for followers, except perhaps in the nether regions here, said Hiawatha, stamping his foot on the mound, where these weapons and their ways are better forgotten. Let none of you think of yourselves as pupils, disciples, or students of either myself or Digandawitta, for one who thinks of himself as a student never becomes greater than his master and one who thinks of herself as a follower shall never excel her leader. Every one of you is capable of accomplishing all that we have accomplished here and considerably more. What we have brought about during these last five years is but a small thing compared to what you will accomplish in the times to come. Look not to us to guide your feet on the path of peace, but look within yourselves and know the great spirit that is the source of our path the source of our words and the origin of the deepest peace. Let his spirit guide you. You will never go astray. Though it may be fitting for a time, for a season, that the two of us are an inspiration to you, understand that in another season you will be inspiration to others, and they in turn to others and others still. And as the smoke from our many individual fires rises to heaven tonight and becomes one smoke flowing out from the tree of the great long leaves that we have planted here. May these thoughts that lie at the roots of peace spread out to all the nations and peoples of the world. Let the roots of this tree grow and spread out beneath the forest floor. I see them, Hiawatha said, pointing to the ground in front of him, growing even now great white roots of peace. Many saw in that moment the tree grow a hand's breadth or more. Beneath the firelight others saw with an inner eye four great white roots growing deep into the forest floor, spreading underground to the four directions, reaching into the subterranean currents that rule human passions. Too many in those moments the great white roots of peace became tangible and real. Above us our thoughts and ideas spread like smoke into the st stars. As Hiawatha sat down to rest at the foot of the newly planted tree, I stood. Behind us a majestic orange moon was slowly rising, half revealed now above the naked trees. I spoke more slowly. I was conscious that each word I said was being repeated quietly, whispered from ear to ear. I could hear the repetitions almost like an echo or a gentle breeze rustling through the forest. I ask that one era be given to Hiawatha from each of the five assembled nations. All present could see the eras one by one, brought to the top of the mound, and ceremoniously placed in Hiawatha's outstretched hand. 
Today, I said, pausing for the echo to take it to the furthest trees, we have combined our individual power into one great power, the power of this confederacy. We symbolize this confederacy by joining together into a single bundle these five eras, one from each of our nations. At the base of the Tree of Peace, Hiawatha is binding the eras with deer sinew, which is strong and durable. So shall our commitment to the great peace be strong and durable. So shall our commitment to the great peace be strong, binding, and durable. So shall these truths that we have celebrated on this occasion bind every one of us here into a single being that we might henceforth act together in unison for the benefit of all. If but one era is removed from this bundle, it loses much of its strength. If two eras are taken away, the power of the Confederacy would be greatly weakened. If three eras are removed, anyone could take hold of the bundle and snap it easily in two. Along Alone, these arrows have little strength, even a child could break them. But bound together in a single bundle, they are strong enough to withstand whatever might come against them. Let the Five Nation League face the future together. Let us think with one mind the thoughts of our Creator, and always seek to peacefully resolve difficulties both within our League and without. Let us feel as one, with one heart, the compassion of the Great Spirit, and strive always to avoid bloodshed. Should any one of us face evil from without, let us all turn and face that evil together, acting in unison with the strength of a single body. From this we shall derive great power, for from this day forward we shall stand or fall, united as a single nation. We will leave this bundle of arrows beneath the tree of the great long leaves to remind us always of our union. Stepping down from the mound, I invited all those who could to stand and form with me in Hiawatha a circle around the tree of peace. By holding firmly to one another's shoulders, I said, we form a circle so strong that none could break through it. Let us live our lives in this circle of commitment to the great peace. Let there always be friendship, honesty, and brotherhood between us. Let our children and our grandchildren grow up and live their lives in this circle of peace and security. Let nothing break or shake our commitment to the principles we have recognized through this sacred union. Always remember that each one of us in this circle is of equal standing and of equal power. With friendship and communication, with patience and understanding, there is nothing that we cannot in time agree upon. Do not let the white panther of discord come leaping and snarling into our agreement. For those who are quarrelsome and who repeatedly stir up trouble will be driven from the league like dead leaves driven from a tree in windstorm. And those who are expelled from the Five Nation League will not be invited to return. But my brothers, I said, my sisters of the forest, let us hope we will have no need for such measures. For the Great Spirit has provided us with all we need to recover our senses should ever we fall into the confusion of blinded passion. Should any one of you ever feel angry or confused, resentful or afraid, climb to the top of the highest tree that you can find and look toward the Maker of this world for your relief. Call to the spirit tribes and wait for the answer to come. Let the thickness of your skin be as thick as the bark of a great tree so that the barbs and taunts of others do not alter your balance or affect your sinner. Do not disgrace yourself by being known as one who is quick to anger, but let patience, tolerance, and thoughtful wisdom characterize your life. Still, do not think badly of yourself if you do become angry or confused. Maybe it is only Gaia's way of telling you it has been too long since you climbed a tree. These passions are something that we all must face in the course of a walk upon the earth. But remember, we face nothing alone anymore, for this circle has joined us forever. You shall have no trouble that is not also my trouble, nor any joy that is not also my own. I say this from my heart, and there are a thousand others with us here tonight who in their hearts say the same thing.